So I hope you got an idea of how encryption works and what impact does a key have in the encryption. So I have kept it very simple so that everyone can understand the basics but don't get carried away as things might get very tricky from here on. So please pay full attention to this. So one thing that I want to clear off at the start is that whenever you hear about encryption keys, encryption in general in AWS, that would be about KMS and that is our key management service. So having said that, the main objective of using KMS is that it helps you to easily create and control the keys used to encrypt, decrypt or digitally sign your data. So I know this might be a bit confusing, but just keep in your mind that whenever you want to encrypt your data, and I'm talking about any data that you make use of in AWS, you can more or less use KMS to do that job for you. That is why it's mentioned here that KMS helps to easily create and control the keys used to encrypt or digitally sign your data. Here in KMS, you can create your own cryptographic keys and manage them using the KMS console or CLI and use it across almost all the services that are supported. So I know it's a bit of exaggeration, but you can check the list of supported services and the documentation as well. But the most important thing that makes KMS so secure is that it uses hardware security modules that is HSM that has been validated under FIPS 140-2. If you don't know about FIPS 140-2, let me tell you that there are security requirements that a cryptography module must meet, which in other words uh, is a standard that it should meet. And FIPS or Federal Information Processing Standard 140-2 provides a very high quality of level of security and is being currently superseded by FIPS 140-3. I think AWS will incorporate the new module for this as well in the future. I haven't checked that exactly, so don't worry about that. But if you want, you can read more about it in the documentation. Moving on, when it comes to compliance and auditing, you can as well integrate KMS to CloudTrail so that it can keep track of what is going on in the encryption modules and can alert you on the changes. One more good thing is that if you are making use of AWS free tier, it includes 20,000 free KMS requests each month. That is great, but it solely depends on how badly you are milking the service. And there are a lot of benefits of using KMS, but I have mentioned a few here that might be useful for you. So the first one is centralized key management. So creating your keys and using them is well and good, but how effectively can you manage the keys? is really important, isn't it? And with centralized key management, you can control everything about the key using the AWS console or CLI, like key rotation, changing the keys or creating new keys or deleting keys and scheduling deletion and rotation as well. And that's something that is really good about KMS. The second one is also very important for you as an architect and developer, that is AWS service integration. So as I've already told you and explained to you about encryption and why at rest and at flight, encryption is very important. Here, AWS KMS integrates with a lot of AWS services to encrypt data at rest. And in order to protect your data at rest, integrated AWS services use envelope encryption that we will discuss in a short while, where a data key is used to encrypt the data and is itself encrypted under a CMK that is a customer master key stored in AWS KMS. There are so many services with which you can integrate KMS that you will be blown away. Just go to the link that I have shared in the description to view the list of supported services. So there'll be a lot of them like EC2, EBS, RDS, etc. Like a lot of them. The third one is custom key store. So in KMS, you can have your own custom key store, which will be backed by, or you can say you will be using the hardware security module to provide you a level of security that you need. And whatever keys or CMKs actually stored in the custom key store are managed by you like other CMKs and can be used with any AWS service that integrates with AWS KMS. So rather than using AWS default key stores, you can as well create your own custom key stores and you can create your CMKs inside that as well. So I know you might be thinking he's talking a lot about CMK, 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 but what exactly it is? So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay. So as per the definition on AWS, AWS Key Management Service or AWS KMS is a managed service that makes it easy for you to create and control customer master keys and in turn, the encryption keys as well that is used to encrypt your data. So here I want you to focus on the couple of terms that I have here. So one is managed service. The second one is create and control CMK. And the third one is the encryption keys used to encrypt your data. 
So AWS provides you with a managed KMS service. So you don't have to worry about the things related to it. If uh, like the service is responding or not, or will it be up or not? What if it does not respond on time? Because it will be the headache of AWS and not yours. So don't worry about that. It will be responding as per your needs. So if you go to AWS console, you will see three options to use KMS. So you will see AWS managed keys. So the second one will be the option to create your customer master keys. And the third one, you will be able to create your own custom key store. So you might be thinking, what is AWS managed keys? So let's suppose you are using S3. When you create a bucket, you will get the option to automatically encrypt new objects stored in the bucket. So you can automatically encrypt the new objects that you store in the bucket itself. So you can enable server side encryption because S3, whatever you store on S3 will be your server side encryption. So there will be two options for encryption types. So you can choose either AWS or Amazon S3 key. So that is SSC S3 or AWS key management service keys. So that is SSC KMS. So if you choose the AWS key management service key, so that is SSC KMS, you will get three options for the AWS KMS key. So the first option will be you can use your AWS managed keys. So it will give you the ARN and either you can choose from your KMS master keys that you have or you can enter the KMS master key ARN as well. So here if you choose AWS managed keys, S3 will create a key for you and add the ARN to the bucket so that it will use that particular key. So if you choose KMS master, you can choose from a list of the created CMKs that you have, else you can enter the ARN of the key itself. And this option is available to all the supported services. So all the supported services in the sense like wherever KMS is supported for the services that AWS provides, you can choose these options. So I hope you got the difference. And when I read this statement again, I think you will be able to get a clear picture. So AWS key management service is a managed service that makes it easy for you to create and control customer master keys or CMKs and the encryption keys used to encrypt your data. Now that we talked about CMK, that is customer master key. So when we talk about CMK, it is basically a logical representation of a master key. So when we talk about a master key, you know that a master key is the trump card which can help you encrypt data, but moreover helps you to secure other keys as well. So like keys for data encryption, encapsulation of keys or authentication keys as well. And the information of the metadata that CMK has is like you have the key ID that you see, the big key ID that you have here, the creation date. So when of the time, when the date is of the creation, so for the CMK, the third one is the description. You can add a string for the part of the description that you have and the key state. So it should be either enabled or disabled. The next AWS supports the creation of two types of CMKs. So one is asymmetric CMKs, which represents an RSA key pair that is used for encryption and decryption or signing and verification and not both. So you can either encrypt and decrypt or else you can use it for signing and verification, but not both. The second one is symmetric CMKs. Here it represents a 256-bit key that is used for encryption and decryption. And remember, when you hear asymmetric, it means unequal. So that is why you have a key pair here instead of a single key, which is when we use the symmetric keys. So symmetric keys will have a single key that will be a shared key. But in asymmetric, you will have a key pair. Here I have mentioned three types of CMKs. So we know about customer managed CMKs. Here you create and manage it for the services that you want to use it for. The rotation and schedule deletion, all of this is managed by you. The second one is AWS managed CMKs. So this one. So it gets created during the integration of AWS service. As I mentioned before that you can integrate a lot of services with a CMK or AWS KMS. So when you integrate it, it will create a key for you. So that will be your uh, or the CMK for you. So that will be the AWS managed CMK. Few of the services support only AWS CMKs and few other provide you a choice between CMKs else you can make use of the third one that we have here that is the AWS owned CMK. So the third one is AWS owned CMK that we have here. So as the name rightly suggests, it is not created or owned or managed by you. It is managed and owned by AWS itself. And you might think what would AWS need it for? So that's a very good question. So these are CMKs that an AWS service has as a part of its armory. 
So the service uses it to protect the resources that are part of the service, but it's not just restricted to your account. So it can be used for multiple accounts as well. So it can use the CMK for other accounts as well. But there are considerable differences that I have mentioned here for three of them. So you can view the metadata of customer master key or CMK and AWS managed CMK, but you cannot for AWS owned CMKs because you don't own it. So you cannot view the metadata. And can you manage CMK? Yes, you can manage the CMK, a customer managed CMK, but not the other two because they are AWS managed. So you cannot manage them. So you can only manage the customer managed CMK. Third one, used only in my account. Yes, it's used only in your account if you choose customer master key and AWS managed CMK, but not for AWS owned CMK, as I already told you. And the rotation policy or the automatic rotation policy is also different. So it is optional for customer managed CMK and it rotates for every 365 days or one year. And it is mandatory for AWS managed CMK required. So that is required because it is mandatory and it rotates every 1095 days, that is three years. And for the AWS on CMK, it varies from the service to service to which it belongs.